everybody, welcome back to my Subaru as we uh, do a deep dive today into the Lord's Prayer. On Sundays, if you're watching the sermons or at church on Sunday, I am doing a series on the Lord's Prayer. And we're, we're breaking it down phrase by phrase, really trying to lean into how do we connect with God? How do we experience God? Prayer is the may, maybe most significant way that we connect with a God who is real and who is near and who is present with his people. And yet so many people, so many Christians feel such a disconnect or a, a sense of distance in their relationship with God. And, and so my hope and my prayer is, is as we dig into this and really try to understand what Jesus is saying when he invites us to pray, and he invites us to pray in a certain way. And it's really critical that, that we don't take the Lord's Prayer and make it some mantra that we just, uh, you know, repeat because we memorized it as children. If we're not careful, it can have that Pledge of Allegiance factor where we can recite it and we, we know it by memory, but we don't really pay attention to the power and the significance of this prayer. It's not meant to just be uh, 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 something that we just recite uh, rotely from memory. And so that's why we're digging into it. And, and, and you, you notice that the very first three statements of the Lord's Prayer are all about God. Think about it. Our Father. What does that mean to you? What does that conjure up in your mind and your life experience? And, and then the second prayer, the second aspect, hallowed be thy name. Those two statements give us such a perfect tension to try to live within, a perfect balance. As you see, if we're not careful, we may tend to lean one way where we see God is, is this kind, benevolent being, but we begin to really treat him more like a vending machine. And, and we try to to get him to bend to our will. See, that kind, benevolent, loving Father needs to be held in balance with hallowed be thy name. And, and to hallow God is to have such a deep abiding respect and awe and fear. Not the kind of fear that, that makes you hide and cower. A fear that conjures up deep respect. And maybe the best way for me, in my own mind, to comprehend that is, is to consider the ocean. Now, living over here in Santa Cruz County, those of you who have been here or live here, you know this. You watch a sunset over the ocean. It's just awe-inspiring. And some of you, you feel closest to God. You feel most connected to God when you're out in His creation. But you know, as beautiful as the ocean can be, you know that it is powerful. And I would even say, if you're not careful, it's dangerous. And so the ocean, if it's going to be fully enjoyed, if we're going to appreciate fully its beauty, we also need to greatly respect the power of the ocean. And it's similar in our relationship with God. You know, someone shared this video with me uh, yesterday. Uh, how many of you have heard of the movie, the classic children's movie, Mary Poppins? Uh, this is a YouTube video clip. Uh, YouTube amazes me. It's, the, the creativity of people is astounding and never-ending. But I want you to watch this short clip. It takes scenes from Mary Poppins, but it puts it to uh, thriller movie uh, music. It's called Scary Mary. Take a look at this and I'll be right back. The proper nanny is to go about it in a proper fashion. I shall put an advertisement in the Times. Select the next person. I presume, may I see them? I make it a point never to give references. Many 
David? Where are the children? They're not here, dear. What? Where else would they be? Well, they're missing. The 17 Cherry Tree Lane. It's a matter of some urgency. See, that, that clip illustrates what I'm trying to say, that we can know in our head truths about God. God is loving. God is powerful. God is near. God is present. We can believe those in our head, but there can be a disconnect with our head and our heart. In other words, your theology, as important as it is, may not translate into your experience of God. That is what we call your image of God or your affective reality. Larry Crabb said that maybe the greatest evil is to live with the suspicion that God is not good. To live with the suspicion that God is not good. And so discipleship, most of you are familiar with that word, but if you're not familiar with that word, it is really a way to explain the process that we enter into as a follower of Jesus of becoming like Jesus. That is the ultimate aim of our Christian life, to learn how to become more and more like Jesus. And so it will take diligent, ruthless work on your part to begin to take what you might already know in your head and have it embedded into your heart so that your effective reality, so that your emotional response to who God is and to who He is for you is, is not that He's a, a vending machine and, and you're just trying to get Him to bend to your will and that he's not a harsh, demanding, militaristic force that is some distant supreme being out there ready to get you when you mess up. God is a God of love, and he's to be endeared, and at the same time, he's to be respected and awed. And so here's the key. Take God's truth. Take God's truth and preach it to your heart every single day, several times a day. Keep preaching God's truth to your heart. You are a beloved child of God.